Okay, um, this episode is being recorded on June 20th, 2022. Uh, I just uh, got my, uh, my Jeep filled, small little uh, tank, $94. I've in my lifetime I've never paid that much uh, to put in a few gallons in a small little vehicle like a Jeep. Okay, ninety four dollars. Uh, I was paying like to fill this tank up in the Jeep. I don't know forty five bucks typically about a year or so ago, and then uh, that guy Biden, you know, he's always tripping, falling. Uh, yesterday, a couple days ago, he he, uh, he was on a bicycle and he fell, and then he was trying to get up into an airplane. He fell a couple of times going up the stairs. Uh, he falls asleep all the time. That's why they call him Sleepy Joe. Okay, uh, that's who the Democrats voted in, and now we're doubling uh, the price of what we're paying for gasoline. Uh, propane is skyrocketing. Heating oil is skyrocketing. I mean, like up 140% or something. Um, inflation rates are at the 40-year high. Uh, they've not seen these kind of inflation rates since uh, uh, this guy, Bi Sleepy Joe Biden, got in. 40-year high. Um, everything. Uh, food. Uh, you know, it's getting nuts. Yeah, everyone is like, you know, on average paying $300 a month more uh, in just in the last year. Uh, just for your simple necessities. Yeah, your fuel and your food and stuff like that. But there's no inflation, you know, according to Biden, you know, and those characters and the, and the Democrat Party. Yeah, all right. The food lines are up like Four hundred percent people trying to get food now um, in most of the major cities and and um, even the smaller uh, towns and stuff. They, they, the food lines have gotten crazy. People are just going under. They're losing everything. Um, Ninety-five percent of the people are living paycheck by ch to paycheck, and now you know with all this stuff. So anyway. Um, this is uh, June 20th, 2022, and this video is from the Vice President of the United States, this interview, saying what our president today, how he is screwing up our whole economy, how he's now dealing with our fuel, uh, the fuel industries, uh, dictatorships like Venezuela, uh, Iran, who hate us, you know, they, they'd nuke us if they could, 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 you know, get some nukes for sure. Russia, well, you know, uh, so now he's begging, you know, going over to the Middle East, begging them to give us, uh, you know, oil and gasoline and, uh, and diesel fuel and stuff. So anyway, listen to our vice president, what he thinks about this uh, Sleepy Joe character that the uh, Democrats um, hired in a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago. Former vice president, Mike Pence. There's Mr. Pence. Hello, sir. How are you? Thank you for coming back on. You bet, Larry. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me on. So listen, just on this little spat, I mean, President Biden wants the um, oil companies to refine more oil into gasoline. But at the same time, he's closing refineries. And we haven't built a new refinery in some 40 years. Now, I don't get this. Uh, Mike Summers of the API, as I mentioned, um, you know, those guys say, look, yeah, COVID may have been a problem. But basically, it's regulations, restrictions, and um, various incentives not to refine. So who's right and who's wrong here, sir? Well, uh, Joe Biden is wrong, and it would be right to unleash American energy and, and take the boot heel of the federal government off the neck 
of American energy companies. Look, I, I just spoke today, Larry, here at the University Club of Chicago, focusing on the economy, focusing on a pathway forward. But there's no question that what's unique about this economic crisis that we're facing, inflation at a 40-year high, gasoline prices up 75 percent, shortages, supply chain shut, is what's unique about this, uh, like I tell an economist like you anything, but to your viewers, different from the Depression, different from the economic downturn in the 70s, different from the Great Recession of 2008, all of this is a man-made economic crisis with 100% of the blame going to President Joe Biden and the radical left Democrats driving policies in the Congress of the United States. Um, to the extent that our friend Mark Short would, would dare show me an early draft of your speech, I do notice that you took um, John Kerry to the woodshed. I guess uh, Mr. Kerry's latest incarnation is he's the climate czar. But Kerry and some others are pushing this idea that no loans and no financing can go to fossil fuel companies. Right. This in an administration which pledges to end fossil fuels forever. So, coming back to the issue of refineries, uh, if they can't get a permit and they can't get financing, then how in the world can anybody expand refineries, um, supply more gasoline, and, and, and lower the price? I don't get this. That's right. Yeah, I said today here in Chicago, John Kerry and a cabal of bureaucrats have literally been bullying banks, telling them not to lend money for energy exploration and production to American energy companies. The irony of which, of course, is they're continuing to try and, and restart the Iran nuclear deal, which apparently would allow us to buy oil from Iran if they signed it into law. And I'm also told they sent an emissary to the, uh, the dictator Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela, ostensibly to expand energy production. But I was in Ohio just last week. When you talk about refineries earlier, Larry, and, and I met with all these great energy leaders there. You know, I graduated from high school in 1977. That was the last year that we built a refinery in the United States. And, and all these producers told me the only thing that is happening is that refineries are being built in other countries that don't have the safeguards for the environment or for employees that we have in this country. So it's, it's, it isn't that the, the production and the investment isn't happening. It's just not happening in the United States of America. And Americans are paying the price at the pump. But as you know better than most, that those gasoline prices are driving inflation. They're impacting the cost of everything that we are buying, all the goods and services across this country. So the very beginning of turning this economy around is to end the war on energy. And I called on President Biden to do that today here at uh, the University Club in Chicago. So let's step back for a minute. Um, we've got a major recession threat. We may be in a recession. We may be on the front end of a recession, whatever. Nothing looks very good. We also have a major inflation threat uh, driven by gasoline prices and oil in general. What would, right at the top, sir, what would a President Pence do to solve these problems? Well, I can tell you that with, with new Republican leadership in the Congress and a Republican administration in two years uh, in the White House, the first thing to do would be to make those Trump-Pence tax cuts permanent. The second thing would be to unleash American energy, open up federal lands to permitting, open up the Alaska National Wildlife Region, begin again, Keystone Pipeline, begin to develop the infrastructure necessary to move energy. And on a broad basis, you know one of the things that drove 7 million new jobs, wages setting records, household incomes setting, setting all new records during the Trump-Pence years, was that we cut more federal red tape in our four years in office than any administration in history. And so we need to go back to the idea that for every new federal regulation, we need to find two that we can repeal. Th those are just the beginnings of that, having free and fair trade deals, negotiating deals that put American workers first. But the last thing we should do, Larry, as you said in your riff, is, is talk about raising taxes or increasing spending I mean, which is literally what the administration 
in, in behind closed doors is continuing to try and negotiate the opportunity to do. They're, gonna, they're not going to build us back better if they get that deal revived. They're going to build us back broke. And the last thing we should ever do in, with inflation at a 40-year high and, and Americans feeling real pain at the pump is raise taxes on American businesses, let alone businesses that are creating the very energy that's driving the American economy. You know, I've been talking on this with our friend Newt Gingrich and Russ Vogt and Steve Moore uh, and a number of other people. Okay, folks. That's our vice president saying what a screwball is president in, in office right now, Biden. Sleepy Joe keeps tripping, falling down, falling asleep on the job uh, in this critical time in U.S. and not just U.S. history, but worldwide. Um, you know, wars are breaking out with Russia and the Ukraine, North Korea uh, and South Korea. Uh, they're on ten high tensions. Um, the Chinese wanting to take over um, Taiwan and all those areas. They're ready to take over and invade. We got all kinds of stuff in 2022. We can't have a, a guy sleeping that's our president. He can't even stand up. And look what he's done to this country in a year and a half. I mean, he's literally going to put this country in a depression by cutting down our oil industry. And he's going to our enemies, who, if a war breaks out with any of these people he's going to to get uh, oil and gas now, instead of our own uh, U.S. companies, if, any, if, we, if a war breaks out with China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, Venezuela... Any of those countries, they will slit our throats. They will cut our oil and gas off completely. And then what happens? Well, all of our industries shut down. So where are we going to get our oil and gas from at that point? To run our airplanes and our jet fighters and our military might and our, our shipping and our uh, industries to, uh, and our trucking industries to ship our uh, food and supplies to the country because Biden, you know, and Harris, uh, the giggly Harris, who, who, you know, he seems to be always stoned from California. Um, so uh, what happens then? We've shut down all of our industry. You know how long it takes if a war broke out, to get all that stuff back and running so we'd have oil and gas for our, our military and for our, uh, our truckers to supply food to you at your home. It could take months to get all those lines hooked up again and get the oil refineries uh, uh, back up and running. But you got it, some idiot... And I, I don't know if he's a commie. I mean, uh, you know, I hate to say he's a commie, but the communists are loving it. Chinese and Russians are loving it. That he has shut down our oil industry, our gas industry, our diesel fuel to our truckers. They're loving it. And don't be surprised if a war breaks out. This would be the perfect time for our enemies to attack us because the first thing they're going to do is shut down uh, those foreign aid, you know, countries where all of a sudden now we have to rely on them. That would be the first thing they do. And within a, within a week, well, you know, we're under. We're, we're going to be in sad shape. So you got this wacko... Uh, and if he's not a if he's not a commie, he's not brainwashed. I mean, he's on heavy drugs. It's easy to brainwash people like that. If he's not brainwashed, then he's a socialist, plain and simple. You know, like Harris and uh, Newsom from California, they're all socialists. That's all they have coming in. Illegal aliens. They're all socialists. That's what they believe in. That's where their relatives are from. 
South America, Central America, Mexico, uh, everything is run in Southern California by Mexicans. Go to any post office, you'll see long lines of people getting, um, uh, getting credentials, U.S. credentials, like passports, illegal aliens, long lines of it. And the, the post office is all run by uh, Mexicans or, you know, people from Central America, Mexico, um, you know, and all their relatives are coming up and they want to get them, you know, credentials and stuff. So that's where uh, they're allowing uh, them to get their uh, passports so they can go in and out of our country legally. Even though, you know, they can't even speak English. I'm, I'm in line with these people in the post office. I start talking to them. And they'd shake their head. They don't even understand me. They don't understand the English language. You can't be an American if you don't understand or speak English. You're from a foreign country. Plain and simple. Just talk to these people. Go to Walmart down in Southern California and get in line and just start talking to these people and they don't know what the hell you're talking about. They're from a different country. Okay, anyway, uh, I see Galeric, uh, another episode on the economy, signing out.